Breaking news, Congresswoman Liz Cheney is taking direct aim at former President Trump again in a new op-ed published just moments ago in the Washington Post. CNN's Jamie Gangel has her hands on it, uh, and she is not going gentle into that good night, Jamie. Not at all. This is, I am told, the opening salvo in what she considers to be uh, a long war ahead. I'm just reading it now. The title of it is The GOP is at a turning point. History is watching. And what it goes through is first, it starts with Donald Trump and the fact that he is continuing to, pro, uh, to perpetrate the notion of the big lie. Just uh, to give you a sense of it, quote, there is good reason to believe that Trump's language can provoke violence again. Trump is seeking to unravel critical elements of our constitutional structure that make democracy work, confidence in the result of elections and the rule of law. No other American president has ever done this. And then, Jake, she goes on, she does mention uh, House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. She calls him out for changing his story on January 6th. She talks about being a conservative Republican and the importance of the rule of law. And then she goes on to talk about uh, the importance of being a Republican versus the party of Trump. She says, quote, we Republicans need to stand for genuinely conservative principles and steer away from the dangerous and anti-democratic Trump cult of personality. Uh, it, it, it goes on to really call out Republicans to understand that this is, uh, as the title says, a turning point in history, and that while uh, winning might seem attractive, em embracing Trump might seem attractive, that it is dangerous to democracy, I'll just read you her final paragraph, which I think sums it up. She says, quote, history is watching, our children are watching. We must be brave enough to defend the basic principles that underpin and protect our freedom and our democratic process. I am committed to doing that no matter what the short-term political consequences might be. Jake? Hmm. Kind of recalls uh, Senator uh, Margaret Chase Smith's declaration of conscience against uh, Joe McCarthy back in 1950. Why is Cheney doing this? And why in the Washington Post, which many on the conservative right consider to be a, a, a liberal rag, to be clear, I do not. But, but, <laughs> but why, would she do, why, would, why would she do it there? I, I don't know why she picked the Washington Post, except it is uh, the paper of... Uh, Washington, D.C., absolutely, and, and all uh, politicians will read it. I also think that this is about um, starting, launching what is going to be the next step in what she considers to be a fight for democracy. She truly believes that Trump is a danger to this country and that the Republican Party has to find itself again. And so I, I think we're going to see that this op-ed is the beginning of that campaign. We'll see if it has any effect. Jamie Gengal, thanks so much for bringing sure. that to us. Also in our politics lead today, federal prosecutors have asked for an independent review of the material that the FBI seized from Rudy Giuliani's home and office. This is an attempt to head off any Giuliani defense complaints about the raid and possible violations of attorney-client privilege. Among Giuliani's clients, of course, one former president, Donald Trump. Giuliani being investigated for his dealings in Ukraine, including whether he conducted illegal lobbying for Ukrainian officials while investigating now President Joe Biden and his son Hunter before the election. CNN's Evan Perez joins me now. Evan, has Giuliani responded to this request for an independent review? Uh, he is not yet in court, but we have heard, uh, Jake, from his legal team, and they say that, that he's going to fight. He wants to make sure that 
uh, confidential material, attorney-client privilege material, is not in the hands of, of investigators that they don't that they don't deserve. And so, what we're expecting is that this special master's third party that the judge is going to is going to appoint is going to have a look at everything that was on these devices uh, that were taken from Giuliani, from his uh, from his assistant. And then, of course, there is the device, the the, the cell phone of Victoria Tensing, who's a, another Trump allied lawyer who was also searched that day, uh, and, and you can bet that all of these lawyers are going are to make the case that there is stuff that the government is going to be able to see that they have no right to see. So you can probably expect there's going to be a couple months of legal fights on this. And Giuliani's advisor are asking the Trump campaign to pay his legal fees. Yeah, you know, that's, that much is clear, is that Rudy has money problems, Jake, and uh, you, both his, uh, his son, Andrew Giuliani, and Bernie Carrick, his, his friend, I uh, have spoken to uh, Gabby Orr here at CNN, and what they're saying is that because what Ju Rudy Giuliani was doing in Ukraine was on behalf of the president, yeah. that he's being punished, that he is being persecuted as a result of that, and as a result, he deserves to have, to, to, be, to be immunized, essentially, but be made whole by the president's campaign. So they're asking for the RNC to step in. Or some of that money that, uh, you know, obviously President Trump has raised millions of dollars because of the big lie, you know, post-election. Some of that money, perhaps, Andrew Giuliani suggests, could be used to help pay for what is going to be a uh, pretty hefty legal fees for, uh, for Giuliani. Seems like a pretty reasonable request. He was doing it at the behest and direction of Trump. Um, tell us some more also, um, because we're learning more about this secret memo written by then Attorney General Bill Barr in 2019 about Trump and the Mueller investigation. What's this all about? Well, this is a, a ruling from a judge who is rejecting from the Justice Department this idea that they can keep secret this memo from the Office of Legal Counsel. Now, if you remember, uh, Barr was criticized for how he came out and, and presented the findings of the Mueller investigation. Because he things, misrepresented Misrepresented it. them. Yeah. Now, the judge has said exactly that. In, in this case, Amy Berman Jackson, the judge here in Washington, uh, says that uh, she finds what Bill Barr did disingenuous. And she says that uh, this memo, uh, far from essentially informing what Barr was trying to make a decision on, which was to, to not bring charges against President Trump at the time, for obstruction of justice, she's saying that no, he had already made it this made this decision. So the idea that uh, he was using this this memo to help make his decision is just false. The memo she's, from the Office of Legal Counsel. From the Office of Legal Counsel. So yeah. she's saying essentially that this is a memo that needs to be released. We don't know whether the Biden Justice Department is going to appeal this if they're going to just turn it over. But it will, I think, Jake, if, you, if we get to see this memo, we may get to see a little bit more of why this decision was made. Because, you know, so far, they've, 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 they, all we know is what Barr has said. All right, interesting. Evan, thanks so much. Uh, let's bring in a former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, Pre Barrara. Uh, Pre, what, what do you make of this secret Barr memo uh, explaining why they shouldn't charge a sitting president, Mr. Trump, with obstruction? Uh, what's your take on it all? Well, it's very redacted, which is why we have this litigation before the court and the judge saying that she doesn't see any real reason to keep those portions redacted. I think what's very significant about this, as Evan alluded to, is it's the, the second time, at least, that a sitting federal district court judge has basically said the former attorney general of the United States, Bill Barr, was not telling the truth or was being disingenuous. And we have other documented cases that have not been litigated where he did the same including the way he described the circumstances surrounding the departure of one of my successors, Jeff Berman, as U.S. Attorney of the Southern District of New York. So it's, I think, very important because it's, uh, you know, a very rare rebuke of the chief law enforcement officer in the land. Um, now it happened multiple times. Uh, and also, if we get to see the rest of the document that the judge referred to as being uh, more strategic and tactical rather than legal and deliberative, uh, we'll see what the thinking was with respect to how they wanted to to describe and characterize the Mueller report uh, and how much of it was a PR campaign to justify things and to make the president look better as opposed to a rational, proper, legal, ethical um, determination. The foreign minister of Ukraine told CNN or earlier in our show, uh, Matthew Chance interviewed him, uh, that he's not aware of any request from the FBI to help with their investigation into Rudy Giuliani. Would it be unusual for the U.S. Attorney's Office or the FBI to ask the government of Ukraine for assistance with this investigation, given that it has to do with 
uh, whether or not Giuliani was illegally lobbying on behalf of Ukrainians? Well, you know, it's not unusual for the United States authorities, we, we did it all the time in the Southern District with many, many countries, to ask counterparts uh, in other governments to assist in an investigation. It may be the case that it's very sensitive. Uh, it may be the case that the American authorities think that they have sufficient evidence uh, and that they're on the verge of making a charge. It's hard to tell. It wouldn't be unusual to ask, and I don't think it's necessarily unusual not to ask.